Okay, back to the list of important Maclaurin series. We have the first four coming from the geometric series. And then we have these last three just coming from the general idea of a Taylor series for a particular function. It's a way to represent the function as a power series. And this is part two where we want to look at other applications of using this, this list here of, of seven known Maclaurin series. So what we're going to do next is build functions off of these functions. I can take one of these functions and multiply it by another. I create a new function and I would like to find the power series for that new function. And so we have this function called e to the x times the natural log of 1 minus x. And that's two of the seven that are on our list of known Maclaurin series. This particular question is saying, okay, you don't have to find the summation or you don't have to find um, some formula for all the terms. Just find the first three non-zero terms. So you go to the list and what you have is e to the x's power series converges for all real numbers. And then you have log of 1 minus x's power series. It converges between 1 and minus 1. And we're going to multiply these together. So we're going to take the power series for one and multiply it by the power series for the other. And that might seem like a undaunting task. It seems like that might take forever. But we're only interested in, in the first three non-zero terms. And so what we're going to do is some sort of super expanded foil where we take some distribution kind of idea where we take 1 times as many as we need on the right hand side then we move and take x times as many as we might need on the right hand side and we organize our our foil organize our distribution so first up is 1 times negative x gives you negative x 1 times negative x squared gives you negative x squared and then 1 times negative x cubed is going to give you negative x cubed now, it could be that we end up losing some terms, but let's just go with this. If, if we do lose some terms, we'll come back and continue this on. But here are the first, non, uh, first three non-zero terms so far. And now we'll move on to the next term that's on the left-hand power series. Let's move on to x. We multiply x by negative x, we get negative x squared. And what we're doing is organizing this in a manner where every column here is going to be representative of a power on x. And so let's just, instead of writing it in continually, on the horizontal level, I'm writing it in kind of like this chart format. It makes it easier to combine the terms. Now, when I go the next x times the uh, negative x squared over 2, I'm going to get negative x cubed over 2. And we would think then that should be enough. There is no way to get an x term. And so we then say, well, that would continue on. And if we need to, we can go back and get more. But for now, let's say that hopefully will be enough. And then we move to the next guy, who would be x squared over 2, or 2 factorial, and that's times a negative x, the green um, sort of uh, multiplication there. And there will be more terms that are higher than x cubed. The next guy will be x to the fourth, and so on. And so, if nothing cancels, we'll be done. Our job is basically to add these vertically. And what we'll have is um, a negative x, and here we have a, a negative 1 half minus a 1. So we'll have, as far as x squareds go, we have negative 3 halves of them. And then the fraction arithmetic for the x cubed is going to be that we have a, um, a negative one third, a negative one half, and another negative one half. So these together give you a negative one. And so we put these together, negative one third and negative one, to give us a negative four thirds. So that's the fraction arithmetic on combining those. And we have our first three non zero terms of the Maclaurin series for e to the x times log minus x. And what we did was we multiplied two series together. When, it, when the question comes in about, well, what x's does this converge for? Remember, now the e to the x power series converged everywhere. The interval was minus infinity to infinity, the whole in real line. But the log of 1 minus x's power series only converged where we had absolute value of x less than 1. And so that's x's between minus 1 and 1. And so then, 
what we're going to say is that this product series, this, this multiplying of these two series together to get this new function called e to the x log of 1 minus x, natural log, we then will have it being convergent only for x is between negative 1 and 1. Basically, what's going to happen is you'll have, um, you'll be looking for the overlap between the two intervals of convergence because you want them both to converge, and then the product then, or um, sum, or any kind of al algebra that you might do with these two functions power series, that will be the interval of convergence of, of that power series. Okay, well, if you can multiply two series together, the next log logical step is to divide two series. Okay, so we have tan x as our function. And we recognize tan x is sine x over cosine x. So we could actually take sine x as power series because it's on our list and cosine x as power series because it's on our list. And we're going to divide these two series. This is long division gone wild. We have to take the denominator and divide it into the numerator. So we have our one minus, you know, the cosine on the outside and the sine on the inside. And we're going to divide the power series. And the fraction of arithmetic gets pretty tough here. But once again, we're looking for the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series. And so let's just plow through it. The way, you know, it works for long division is I like to write this chart where first off you start with what you have and then you want to see what, what you want to turn it into. Um, and so you figure out, well, then what are you going to multiply by to make that happen? And so for us, starting with the smallest terms, usually with polynomial division, you start with the highest terms, but this is kind of flipped over where we have these polynomials that never end. And so you look at the leading term, who is the smallest guy, and you have an x and you need a 1. What do you multiply that x by to turn it? I'm sorry, you have a 1 and you need an x. Oh, gosh, sorry about that. <laughs> you have a 1 and you need an x, and so you end up multiplying it by x to make it happen. That multiplier goes up top as the first part of your quotient. And what you do with that is you distribute that across to all the parts on the outside, and you put that result in that spot there. And so when we do that, we'll get an x minus an x cubed over 2 and and plus an x fifth over 24 and we can keep going with that if we wanted to but remember now what we have to do is subtract so just throw parentheses around the whole thing and just work how the subtraction would work work it out x minus x is going to cancel when it comes time to the cubic term we're going to have a negative 1 6 take away a negative 1 half so plus a 1 half and just do the fraction of arithmetic, we have negative 1, 6, and 3, 6. So all together we have 2, 6. And that will then be x cubed over 3. Um, for the fifth, it's going to be 1 over 1, 20, minus 1 over 1, uh, 1 over 24. And um, 24 times 5 is 120. So 1 minus 5 all on top of 120, or 4 on top of 120, negative that is. And then that'll be um, 1 30th. And the seventh, it's, it's bad, but here it is. It's uh, negative 1 over 50, 40, and then plus 1 over 720. And so um, 720 times 7 will get you the 50, 40. And so you get negative 1 plus a 7 all together, a 6 over 50, 40. And that reduces to, to 1 over 8, 40. Anyway, we have that, and we start the process over again. Now we focus on this term, and we say, well... I have an x, and I need to turn that into a x cubed over 3. So I'm going to multiply by, I have a 1, sorry. I need to turn that into x cubed over 3. So I multiply that by x cubed over 3. That is your second part of your quotient right there. Distribute it across. Put the minus sign, parentheses around it, and now subtract. Okay, it's meant to be that the cubic terms are going to cancel the way you set it up. And then uh, this last little fraction arithmetic here is uh, negative 1 over 30 plus 1 over 6. So negative 1 plus 5 all over 30, that's the 4 over the 30, or 2 over 15. Uh, and that last guy is just uh, negative 4 over 315. We don't have to worry about that one, though, because our job is to find the first three non-zero terms. We have two of them now. To get the third one, we start the process 
one last time, we don't have to go further than just working the fact that you have a 1 and you need a 2x fifth over 15. So you multiply by 2x fifth over 15. And that's the last part of your quotient. And that's it. So tan x is going to be that. The first three non-zero terms is exactly x plus x cubed over 3 plus 2x fifth over 15. So it was really involved with the fractions. If I was to ask this on a test or um, in some other setting, then it would be much more reasonable. This fraction arithmetic was a bit out of control, but that's how it works. If we can multiply two series together, why can't we divide one series by another? And so that's the end of this part two, looking at applications of the McLaren series.